From the dumpster fire that was the last movie, to the franchise ending right there, being the logical move for the franchise, here's the real reason there won't be a Suicide Squad 3, cause let's be real. The sequel was a box office disaster. People either didn't like it or just didn't care about it. It's like a classic case of the Tomb Raider trap, you know? They hyped up the movie like crazy, creating a ton of pre-release buzz with their marketing campaign to make it look like it was the release of the year. But then, the movie actually hit theaters, and things took a turn for the worse. It got terrible reviews, and the fans just weren't having it. Despite all that, though, it somehow managed to make a boatload of money. And that's where the trouble begins. Here's the thing, because the first movie made so much dough, and I'm talking millions here, they decided to go ahead with a sequel. I mean, you can't really blame them for wanting to cash in on that success. But the catch is, DC knew they messed up with the first film. That's why they promised to make a better one this time around. So, they released the sequel and guess what? It's actually better than the first one, with greater reviews, but it doesn't do as well at the box office. The opening weekend numbers are way lower than expected. Why? Well, it seems like audiences were either satisfied with the first film or they straight up hated it, so they're hesitant to give the sequel a shot. And I've gotta say, it makes you understand why the studio doesn't want to risk making a third movie, especially since they spent so much on the sequel. I have to talk about the insane amount of money they dropped on an R-rated movie. I mean, $185 million? That's just plain stupid. Now, don't get me wrong. You've seen R-rated superhero flicks like Deadpool and its sequel, along with Logan, rake in some serious cash at the box office. Those movies made $863 million, $865 million, and $620 million. And let's not forget about Joker, which blew everyone's minds by crossing the $1 billion mark, showing everyone that R-rated supervillain films could hold their own against the big guns like Aquaman. But all those movies were made on a relatively modest budget, around $50 million, to a maximum of $100 million, like they didn't need to shatter records to make a profit. Now, fast forward to this situation, they're making a sequel to a PG-13 movie that cost $175 million, and they were throwing a whopping $185 million at it. This was a huge risk, especially because the sequel just lacked selling points. The sequel didn't really strike a chord with general audiences. The previous Suicide Squad movie had some recognizable selling points. Jared Leto's tattooed Joker, despite being at the butt of many jokes on the internet, still had that love him or hate him, you can't ignore him kind of vibe. Will Smith's presence and the promise of the storyline connecting to Batman v Superman also added to the hype. People were curious and willing to give it a shot, but this time around with the Suicide Squad, things were a bit different. The only widely identifiable trait was Harley Quinn, and even she couldn't guarantee success. I mean, look at the poor financial returns of her solo movie, Birds of Prey. It makes you wonder if audiences still associate her with that not-so-great film, or if they just can't separate her from her abusive ex-boyfriend. And let's not forget the new cast members. Idris Elba and John Cena may be big names, but their star power alone couldn't save the day. Audiences were thrown off by their inclusion because Hey, they were completely new additions to the squad out of nowhere. But if there's one thing that could have really been the final nail in the coffin, it's the ending of Peacemaker. The events in the Peacemaker finale kind of threw a wrench in the works, which has made the possibility of a third movie even slimmer. Even though there hasn't been an official announcement for a sequel to James Gunn's Suicide Squad, fans were hopeful, especially considering the positive reception the movie received, both in theaters and on HBO Max. It seemed like the franchise had some legs to keep on going. But DC hasn't given us any clear answers about their plans for the movie's future. Then came Peacemaker, the spin-off series on HBO Max that focused on a few characters from the Suicide Squad. It was the perfect opportunity to expand the story and maybe even create a bridge between the second movie and a potential third one. With Peacemaker and his crew dealing with a full-on alien invasion, it had all the elements for some major developments in the DCEU and a chance to tease future movies. But the finale didn't actually set up Suicide Squad 3. In fact, it did the opposite. In the last episode, Leota Adebayo revealed Project Butterfly to the public. Not only that, but she dropped Amanda Waller's name and exposed the whole existence of Task Force X. By doing that, 
Adebayo effectively brought down Waller and ruined any chance of her assembling a new Suicide Squad lineup. So now, DC is focusing on Peacemaker Season 2 instead. With Amanda Waller being exposed to the public, the possibility for Suicide Squad 3 is looking pretty bleak. I mean, everyone knows about Task Force X now, so it's not like they can just reinvent the team and start fresh. I'll be real here. The DC Extended Universe seems to be shifting gears and transitioning the Suicide Squad into Peacemaker Season 2. While a third movie might not be on the immediate horizon, it's possible that the next season of Peacemaker could set the stage for the franchise's next installment. Of course, the plot details for the upcoming season of the show are being kept under wraps, but there's a few directions they could take. One obvious storyline to follow after season one is the clash between our anti-hero and his former boss. Even though it was Adebayo who spilled the beans on Waller, you just know Peacemaker's gonna face some serious wrath from her. And here's another possibility. The new season could in fact be all about setting up Suicide Squad 3. But don't get your hopes up, cause James Gunn's made it clear that he won't be working on a third movie anytime soon. Let's look on the bright side though. The delay in the sequel's production could actually work in its favor. See, since the release of The Suicide Squad in 2021, fans have been itching for more and wondering when the next installment would come. But the sequel is still in the planning phase, which means there's an opportunity for it to gradually enter production. Gunn's got his hands full with multiple television show projects for the ever-expanding DC Extended Universe. He has expressed interest in making The Suicide Squad 3, but given his already jam-packed schedule, he simply doesn't have the time right now for such a massive undertaking. By postponing The Suicide Squad 3, Gunn and his collaborators have something invaluable. Time. Back when the DCEU first kicked off in 2013, there was this pressure to match the pace of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which had been going strong since 2008. But now, with this delay, Gunn can take his time to develop the story adding depth and allowing it to naturally progress from the last film. But maybe it's for the best, because it didn't exactly hit the mark with critics or audiences and that's saying something especially in the controversial DC Extended Universe. Comparing it to Zack Snyder's films like Man of Steel and Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, love them or hate them, those movies do have their defenders. They've got a legion of fans who will passionately stand by them. Even those who aren't fans will often acknowledge that something like Man of Steel gave Superman a fresh take after the underwhelming Superman Returns. But when it comes to the entire Suicide Squad franchise, things took a different turn. Even the director himself, David Ayer, disowned the theatrical version, saying it wasn't at all the movie he intended to make. That's a pretty bold statement. In fact, Ayer and many fans have been campaigning for the release of the original Ayer cut to give the fans a clearer impression of his true vision. Despite its negative reception though, the 2016 film Suicide Squad did have one thing going for it. Introducing a new version of the Joker and the first live-action cinematic take on Harley Quinn. That certainly piqued people's interest and helped the movie find some success at the box office. But let's be honest, the largely negative reception played a role in the disappointing box office performance of the much-improved follow-up. The Suicide Squad, in 2021, which was like a soft reboot under the direction of James Gunn. In all fairness, The Suicide Squad had the unfortunate timing of being released during the COVID-19 lockdown. And to make things even more complicated, it had a simultaneous release on HBO Max, which obviously affected the box office numbers. So, from the franchise ending right there being the logical thing for the franchise, to the dumpster fire that was the last movie, here's the real reason there won't be a Suicide Squad 3.